Blythe has a big old sword, some hefty armor, and that's about it. It's simple, but it's clean. It might seem a little goofy for a dog to be running around using weapons, but I'm here for it. Hey everybody, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you want to watch these runs live, follow us on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon to support the channel and for exclusive videos. And like and subscribe if you want to be a good dog. You want to be a good dog, don't you? We'll kick things off using the Jedi Exile base. Hey, I didn't see that video. Yeah, well you would have if you were on the Patreon. The levels are pretty good and we should be able to grab Blythe's gear pretty quickly. Quickly Google grabbing Blythe's gear on my work computer and it seems we have to do the Ronnie quest. Had to dig through a lot of very interesting fan art pieces first though. This better not awaken anything in me. Talk to a doll, she wants us to fight the Baleful Shadow and we've got the Hand of Melania. This fight's gonna go great. And we're gonna get fucking plays broken immediately. Yep, right out of the sky. Okay. Again. And you're doing that. Let's go up. It's enough silly goose moves anyway. Again. The exact same thing again. Again. Kinda seems like maybe we shouldn't just keep trying the same exact thing without changing our strategy. Again. Now that we've killed the sussy imposter Blythe, we can get a wedding ring from Renala's house and go fight Blythe again. But he's just sitting sadly on the stairs, waiting for his master to come home, like the dog in Futurama. Also like the dog in Futurama, we put it in the blender. Hopefully this isn't a preview of our fight with Melania in a few hours. Me too, past self. Me too. That gives us every piece of armor except the mask. For that, we just gotta run over to Selvis's tower real fast, and then... We're ready to go. From the description, a mask fashioned after the head of a black wolf, relic of an assassin who assumed the guise of Ronnie the Witch's loyal shadow. The likeness is striking. So that was actually lore about the baleful assassin. Maybe that assassin should have bailed when we slashed her. Okay, from the armor description, well-worn black armor of the man-wolf Blythe. The pelt serves as a cape, protecting from the cold. Blythe was the blade of Ronnie, but the cold bothered him anyway. Is that a Frozen reference? Okay, Gauntlets and Greaves. Blythe, who served as Ronnie's shadow, was a loyal ally who would defy destiny itself if it would have him turn upon his lady. And finally, from the Royal Greatsword, Greatsword decorated in the Royal Carrion style, favored weapon of Blythe, the Half-Wolf. In defiance of the fate he was born to, Blythe swore to serve no master but Ronnie. As proof, the sword was imbued with cold magic at the moment the oath was sworn. All right, so we've got a dog that gets cold, is serving Ronnie and is rewarded with his sword getting ice magic. Imbued with cold magic means that there's frost buildup on every hit, right? Not this time. Respect with Renala for more strength, intelligence, just enough dexterity, and a lot of extra endurance. Blythe has that heavy armor and that heavy sword. Also, if he was raised by Ronnie and Ronnie was raised by Renala, did Renala raise Blythe too? I kind of get the vibe that he was literally treated like a pet by the rest of the family. After a brief detour on stream to put the traps from the Saw movies in a tier list of they deserved it to that person is literally innocent, follow me on Twitch, we have fun, then take an L because we fell and the Alpha L avatar hits us with the Elden Stars Jr. before we could stand up. Very cool. This dude kind of sucks to fight. Obviously the fact that it almost always leads with the most annoying move while you are recovering from the landing animation is a load of crap. But it also throws loads of crap at you. On this side of a bridge, that load of crap is kind of hard to avoid. Oh well. At least there's a Somberstone 10, the only Somberstone we need to max out the sword since we have the bell bearings from the previous run. Only one more trip while we still have the Grace, the Erdtree Avatar in Lernia. One of them. There are two. This is the one that gives three good Physic tiers instead of two bad ones. I straight up do not respect it. Just use that Wolf Assault Ash of War, dive in, make a frosty explosion. It takes two jumps to actually make the frost, but I'm sure that won't be a problem later. It gives us the magic boosting physics tier for 20% more magic damage. The Royal Greatsword does split damage with magic and physical, which is apparently bad. More on that later. Everything we need in new game is done, so we're ready to beat the game. Wow, that was easy. Almost as easy as building your own website with today's sponsor, Squarespace. That's right, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Look, gamers, we love hard games like Elden Ring, but designing a website for your business shouldn't be difficult. With Squarespace's Fluid Engine, you can pick a solid starting template and then customize it to fit your needs. It's sort of like building your own character in a video game, except I don't think there's a color palette that gives you better fire damage. Even an Unga Bunga strength enjoyer like me can build 
build a solid website. I built On Your Work Computer, a place for you to get helpful advice about advancing in corporate America just as a goof, because it was fun. We're working on building a merch site, but I thought that building a merch site would be hard, and making the merch would be easier. Nope, other way around. Setting up a merch store with Squarespace is so easy, helping you maximize your connection to your audience and help them get their fashion soles on. Even if you don't have an online business, Squarespace can help you start one with analytics to show you where your customers are coming from. If they're coming from Kaled, maybe sell them hand sanitizer. It's yucky there. Whatever your website needs, go to squarespace.com and you'll get a free trial to get started today. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash 2LockMango and enter offer code 2LockMango for 10% off your first domain or website purchase. Now, back to that dogged fellow. We're back in the Chapel of Anticip patient and the ng plus grafted scion is so different than ng grafted scion no respect necessary we just dive in with the ash of war and huh still takes two to get the frostbite off not as much of a problem against something like this little dude but later it's gonna be big useless or value less it's at least less valuable. The damage is fine, but you are committing to this. Makes sense that the loyal dog boy is committed. Then you get bodied, usually. Super armor carries us through for now, but later, we're probably just gonna stop using this. Hopefully this sword hits hard enough that it doesn't matter if the Ash of War is terrible. Because it's NG+, plus, we have the horse already, and when we hit Limgrave, we can just ride right into Margit. It's still earlier enough that I'm not feeling like wearing my respectacles, can't see a reason to, though to be fair, I can't see much of anything without my spectacles. This is actually a deeply concerning fight. We jump one, two, three, and four times before we get the frostbite. It almost killed him, but I'm not going to be able to jump against Melania four times. rut -row. Speaking of, uh, rut -row, I forgot to stop by Melina. I guess she's the Daphne to our Scooby-Doo, holding the Scooby Snacks that are our levels. Gostock is trying to play guard dog to Stormvale, but nobody stopped us. The danger path doesn't feel all that dangerous. Even the big cat whiffs us. It would be great if we could be friends, but who am I kidding? It would never work. Let's see if we can make the frostbite work better against Godric. Jump once, jump twice, jump thrice, and nothing. We're in phase two. We run in and jump a fourth time. There it is. It's enough to get the stance break, so with one more hit, we're done. Concerning lack of frostbite from the sword imbued with cold magic. And it's not like adding frostbite on each hit would make this super overpowered. Okay, it kind of would. Let's activate the Great Rune plus five to every stat. Should help this run not be as rough as I'm worried it will be. Get it? Rough? That's the song the dog makes. Let's go back to our hometown Lernia. First, we drive past our old school. It's always so weird to see it. It looks smaller, right? I've been better at this bridge jump lately. You just can't be afraid of it. A bit nervous about fighting Renala. She has 80% magic resistance. So does Smarag, right by the Glintstone Key. So let's just see exactly how bad this split damage is going to be. Oh, I guess I was wrong. Smarag must only be like 40% resistance. Wow. I guess this damage is split, sure, but only if split means splitting a dragon's skull open. Oh my lord. Bly, the school days were fun. We used to be the mascot here, but there's a new one. A red one. Those are the away colors. You gotta wear blue and gray if you're at home. Come on, Red Wolf. It's time for everyone's favorite Elden Ring game show. Can, Moongrum, parry. Today's contestant is the Wolf's Assault, Ash of War. Moongrum can't parry it. What does the Ash of War win? I don't know. I didn't really think through the ending of this bit. There's not really a punchline. There's no prestige. Time to fight, I guess, our mom. Renala is the almost mother she's just serving left and right first kid is right behind me trying to trick me and then we start slamming Renala until we hit phase two no! Thankfully, we're seeing the golden children as they light up and just need one more hit to get her on the lake. Ew, are we going to smell like a wet dog the rest of the run? Boy, howdy, I'm feeling that buffed stance she gets in NG+. Our colossal sword should be breaking her down pretty free, but it just isn't. She gets to teleport as she summons the giant, forcing a pretty major whiff on our end. Then she summons Darawil. Rotting in a cell is no true justice. Rotting on a lake I'm fine with. We'll just ignore him and press into the moon mother. Now let's really go home. Ah, carry a manor. It feels like just yesterday we were scratching at the door to get out, then immediately scratching the other side of the door to be let back in, then doing the same thing over and over again until EG just didn't let us back inside one day. Loretta isn't a real member of the carry a manor squad. She's just a ghost with a 
horse, and sorry, sweetie, there is only one emotional sport animal on this team. Let's go talk to Ronnie, and I want to clarify something. I've seen a lot of you dorks calling Blythe a Ronnie simp. That's not true. Blythe is a Ronnie stan. A stan and a simp are two totally different things. Both appreciate a girl boss, but whereas a simp does it in an expectation of sexual reward, a stan simply enjoys serving someone who serves so hard on a daily basis. Blythe isn't horny for Ronnie, he just respects her for being a true gaslight gatekeep girl boss. She literally does all three of those things in this game. Whoops. Blythe is still here too? Awkward. 180 centimeters versus 182 centimeters. Am I right, metric enjoyers? Time for errands. There is a way to start the Radon Festival without going to Altus, and it's even a quest for Ronnie. We would just simply have to ride down the Sersha River well, find Blythe on this specific cliff, fight three ancestral guardians so we can warp out, talk to Salivus, fight the pumpkin head. Give Selen the letter from Celibus. The mail's here. Then go back to Blythe and kill the Minotaurs again before running back to Kaled to see the impassable Great Bridge has a warp, which means it's officially in party mode. Finally! It takes about 20 minutes all told. Actually, not as bad as I thought it would be. Huh. Are we liking this trend where I record a bunch of extra stuff I thought would be longer and then ends up being shorter? I hope so. Instead, I just go get the Dectus pieces. Save Alexander from a hole. Blythe and Alexander are my favorite kind of ship. Friendship. Grab the charge attack talisman from the Mistwood and get the grace by Fort Height. Hey, that saves time later. Now, imagine Blythe in Fort Height. That's just Wendell, a loyal mountaineer with quite the bite. Wait a minute. How do you know Fortnite characters if you've never played it? Well, I'm a Survivor fan, and one of the former winners named Wendell got into some drama recently. While I was trying to find the tea on that, I found a lot of very creative artwork of Wendell from Fort Height. Do you believe in soulmates? Um, okay, now don't be mad at me. Anyway, we get the other Dectus piece from Fort Faroth. Then we fall down into Kaled through the town of Horsery and pick up an extra sacred tear from the Plague Church on the way. Touch base at that impassable Great Bridge, then warp up to Altus. It took 21 minutes, but I also refilled my water for six minutes, so it's technically faster. And I had water. Time to party, dog! with another dog at the party. It's the Radon Festival. Summon everyone, Blythe is the dog that wants to be everybody's friend, even another version of himself. Sometimes dogs have fun with mirrors, sometimes they don't. Get in there with everyone and it's kinda easy to hit the Ash of War. He's got a lot of moves that make him stand still. Does take four uses to actually get the Frostbite, but the Frostbite ends up killing him and I like that. Did you know you can end Radon's arrow phase early by killing him? The ultimate removal method is always player removal. Hey, did Blythe get raised with Radon as well? He's Ronnie's brother. Did that ever come up? I don't think so. That's why I'm hoping it's okay that Blythe is entering Radon's hole. Maybe this Ash of War is good for NPCs. It's got a big shockwave. They're stupid. Maybe they'll just sort of run into it. Let's test it on the Mimic. Yeah, that's still not great. Its accuracy is low. The damage isn't even all that good. Like it works on the Mimic, but that's the Mimic. Let's light some torches, then go for the big moose. Scooby-Doo versus Bullwinkle, Dawn of Justice. He splatoons and immediately teleports away before we've even hit him. Oh, this is gonna be fun. We get hits off so that when it starts healing, I decide it. Let's just face tank and pray for a stance break. Prayer's answered. The moose is dead. Happy birthday, Ronnie. I got you this knife that can kill gods. Use it on Selvis first to make sure it's sharp enough, okay? I'm not even mad about the puppets. I mean, I'm a little mad about the puppets. But why doesn't he just say, oh, we need to talk to Selen when you first meet him? Why do you have to go underground, ask Blythe to tell you that Selvis is Selvsus, and then go all the way back? So annoying. Anyway, warp to the incel river main, which isn't a place for Blythe. He's not an involuntary celibate. He's just ace, and that's cool. Ace dog. Run through the lake of rot. And it's time for Astell, Hefty Naturals of the Void. Speaking of Void, let's avoid the big lasers and then run in. He does the tail stab, that pretty much ends the fight. We can fully charge our attacks to get the stance break and a crit. One more charge attack and he has to teleport away to make meteors. Get a little domed by the meteor and then greed into the grab attack to win. 
I've never been punished in my entire life. Let's cool down Boggart's shrimp with our big jump. It works great here, but it's Boggart. So, you know, he's sitting still just waiting to get hit. Then give the necklace to Raya and, oh, hold on, that's the ship. Raya and Blythe, two nice furries. They meet when Rikard and Ronnie reconnect for a little bit, bringing their entourages with them. I know I said Blythe is ace, but Demi is a kind of ace, and Raya is a kind gamer girl with a bad spine. It's exactly who he'd fall in love with. Yeah, that's the ship. Someone cooked here. Crank that shortcut in Volcano Manor, but it's not like we need it. We're fighting a Godskin Noble, and I'm awesome at this fight. The Great Sword doesn't have slashing damage, but it can do piercing damage with some attacks? Weird. He goofs up and goes for the fireball. We can punish that pretty hard to get in the phase transition. Actually dodge the phase transition and the jump attack after. Amazing how good fights go when you dodge easy attacks. Free win. I've been goofing off on this fight lately. I'm happy I got a good run on it. The rest of Volcano Manor goes a little faster since we can run through the lava in New Game Plus. Then we fight Rikard with the Serpent Hunter. It's done in five minutes. Okay, bye. Next important boss is the Valiant Gargoyles. Remember, split damage means that the resistances are applied twice. It might look like the sword has over 1,000 base damage scaling, but it doesn't actually hit that hard because, you know, split damage is bad. Are you sure about that? Seriously, what the f did they feed this sword and why were they feeding a sword swords don't eat i'm not even using charged attacks these are r1s but because of the massive size it's still hitting like a truck without brakes oh sorry there is some brakes stance brakes first gargoyle down the armor Blythe is wearing is also a major factor in this run's success. It might require us to have a lot more endurance, but as long as you're a medium equip load, that doesn't matter. That just means more swings with the big sword. More R1s and jump attacks get a stance break, and we kill the second gargoyle like we killed the first. Big ol' crit. Wow, we're almost to the royal capital already, and it's been like two hours. Once you take out the section where I talked about Saw. For like 20 minutes. Come hang out on Twitch. Bash some ants for a few extra rune arcs in case we die a lot soon. Still haven't actually died this run unless you count the baloney things in Elphiel when we were getting that somber 10, which I do for the metrics, unfortunately. Fias champs get easier as they go. I'm not talking about the more runs I do, I mean as they spawn in. For whatever reason, the first one dodged our jump and stabs a little bit better. That's the worst case scenario. Roger gets a few hits off, but it's no issue. Finally, get that jump timing to work on Lionel as he spawns in, but then the sweep of this big sword cleaves through multiple simps at the same time. Stands are stronger than simps. You love for the hope of reward. I love for the joy of loving. Everyone get your pet rent ready. It's time to be a dog in the city. There's a blast from the past. Y'all remember Jim Henson's Dog City? If you do, make sure you stand up to stretch your legs every now and then. I do my best to narrate the videos well enough that you could still understand what was happening if you walked away from the screen. Erdtree Avatar fight goes a lot better than the putrid Avatar did at the beginning of the run. Go away from the Elden Stars. Thankfully, we're thick enough to trade even though I'm doing a terrible job of avoiding hits. Godfrey Shade next. Don't have to grab the Ritual Shield Talisman. We've had it the whole time. Bait that Shade's silly jump. I too have a cool jump that isn't actually very good roll around to get the hits off and a stance break i drink my flask right in his goddamn face no respect i don't get no respect at all and then crit it's tremendously satisfying morgan is a little bit faster but it shouldn't be a big problem swing in those big chunks push him into phase two and watch him get sick but get hit by a geyser eh, it's fine. we're doing great until the flurry attack then just watch that health bar drop Oof. I don't like dying, but I do like Morgoth. Dude is cool. Back at it, that was actually our first death since starting NG+. I can afford to make goofball moves, like drinking the wrong flask in his face, greeting into the phase transition, even getting grabbed. We're just kind of solid here, and this run is solid. For Biden lands, and you know what? Maybe America needs a furry president. Let him finish. Think about it. Furries are generally pretty accepting of other people's values and beliefs. They're great with money because fursuits are so expensive. Obviously, they'd care about climate change because those suits have to be a veritable sweat lodge. And I think most of them have a master's in computer science. It's time we put a pause on old geriatric dudes and put some paws in the White House instead. God, I am just so desperate to fill the narration gap on the way to Fire Giant. Google Phil uses furries to fill his gap on your work computer to find out more. Fire Giant has a 
ludicrously high frostbite resistance even in new game in new game plus that's just even higher naturally i thought it would be funny if we tried to get the frostbite off first one doesn't do it second one doesn't do it third one doesn't do it but we're in phase two four and five and six seven eight have to back up for the balls then nine 10, 11, whiff 12, hey, fuck 12 anyway, and then the 13th one actually hits. So technically 12 hits. I'm just gonna say the last one got it. I wanna believe. Cover the Erd Tree in butter because it's toast and wiggle through for Ramazula, avoiding the other dogs because I'm a good boy who wouldn't bark at the other dogs. Bernie and Blythe, that's another friendship. These two boys are pretty big. I'm jump attacking the Chunky until he pulls the Black Flame and makes us back off. Stance breaking a crit makes him skip the phase two transition. Glad I noticed the kind of smoky aura around him because otherwise I'd be trying to avoid phase one moves. And Bernie has finished the Apostle by the time we're done. I try to get a Frostbite on the Chunky, doesn't happen because the Ash of War is terrible, and the sword itself is so good that it just kills things too fast. Dead Apostle, we win. Dudes rock. Swag jump, bird run, and it's time for a shadow off. Shadow of Merica, the shadow of Ronnie, dawn of justice. He's swinging at us, we're swinging at him. Big stance break, and I wait to get a charged attack off instead of a crit. That way we go into phase two with more pressure on. His jump stray hits us to force us to stay in the big AoE. That's bad, but remember, our ones are fine. We get the big crit for the win. Blythe has that hotness, and Malaketh has that notness. Gideon gets hit with the Ash of War, Blythe putting his sword in the ground does some good damage but it really hurts when he pulls it out, almost like the sword gets bigger while it's inside until it explodes. Not going to dwell on that much longer, let's fight Godfrey, another strength enjoyer. He's here to punish us for splitting damage. Not that the damage we do is bad, the damage he does is just a lot, especially with some questionable earthquake hitboxes. Second death and both are in this room? I hate it here. I don't know, we just whiff dodges the second attack. Attempt. Are the circle buttons broken in your house, son? One more time, trade immediately, ouchie. But big breakdown, nice chunky crit, and we get a few big hits off when he tries to do the big shockwave phase. That means in phase two, we should get another one soon. Okay, there it is. Hit him with our pullout game because it's disrespectful. Some players have respect for Godfrey. Blythe, Blythe does not. Okay, Radagon is generally a problem, but I did pretty good here. Flask up, jump attack, and back away. My timing is immaculate. He cones. We charge attack. He jumps. We jump him instead and get the big crit. Hammer Slammer doesn't hit us and a combo from the back. Gamers, that's a hitless Radagon. Elden Beast next, it uses its weird squid body to avoid our second charge attack. Come on, money back on that. We get hit with the uber explosion and just kind of have to chase it down for a long time. The breath is really hard to avoid if you're in a bad place and then the flurry combo, I am so bad at dodging that. We lived though, we lived. As it's trying to get Elden Stars going, we stance break it. You can't let you do that. I'm trying to disrespect it to death with Wolf's Assault. It's not the smartest way to win, but it is the funniest. Just gotta clean our plate now, or I guess our bowl? And I think you know, this dog is hungry. I act like that because I am more important. I'm the big dog around here. Ruff, ruff. Plassy time, I run to that bad dragon's tail and it tries to push us into the lightning, but I'm too good. Even when it flies away, we just run back and start sniffing its ass again. That's how dogs say hi. Apparently you can find out a lot about someone's personality by putting your face in their butt. Generally, humans do the opposite order. Plassy is swinging with his right claw today. I thought he was a southpaw. Really hate the Omega laser, so what if we simply don't let him do it? Get the stance break, hit him a bunch, and he dies. If you don't like a boss's attack, kill them. Flip the study hall, get a curse mark of death from some broad's dead charred body. I don't know who this is, but get good scrub. Probably not anyone important to Blythe. Fia gives us some good pets. Goth girls love dogs. Fortisac's next. It's the hardest fight to narrate because... What is going on? Uh, some people like this fight. They must be using Night Comet or something, because if you're using a melee weapon, you just don't get to see what happens. I think we won. I think. Let's blast off into the castle's hole like a red rocket. It's Nile time. Three on one, finally a fair fight. Just barrel into that dual wielder, then right up to the big shielder. Hey, this is a great place to make note of this armor's frostbite resistance. Remember how the armor description said that Blythe is always cold? Well, his coat keeps him warm. Nile goes for the Omega attack, and that's a free punish. Few more hits, we get another stance break and finish it off with some back shots. Do it doggy style so we can both watch X-Files. 
miles. While we run around to the consecrated snowfield, can I just say that I love that one of the videos y'all enjoy the most is my attempt to put as many Bloodhound Gang references into one video. It keeps bumping up again and again. Gotta be that clickbait, right? Penguin Noble just gets killed by the dive. Shouldn't it have powder down feathers? Come on, too bad. It's Mogan time. I just get hit by the fire punch and he shows us his pullout game. Why am I getting hit by the fire punch? It's the easiest move to dodge. As he's counting, we build the stance pressure, but no Eleonora tier means we're still losing a lot of health in the phase transition. Funny thing, we have the Eleonora tier. It, it's in our inventory. I just didn't put it on. I for gore. Another hit from the fire punch. I, come on, man. I just don't get the stance break that I thought I would, so we died. Mogius 2, still Mogan. At least we can dodge the fire punch better here. Big stance break right before the phase transition, so we can have him pretty low, even with all the healing. I mean, he still gets to more than half. That's a really good move. I would just do that move if I was him. I'm doing better with the timing of my dodges. Get another stance break. These crits really are where we're getting most of the damage. He's on the other end of the arena, and we gotta play split tune to avoid the blood puddles, land a few more hits, and get the win. Now, there are a lot of areas in this game that are cool, but this town, it's liturgical. It's the liturgical town. No issues in the Howling Tree, let's duke it out with Loretta. Horse Girls v Furries, Dawn of Justice. She kicks us, I really wish that attack was an insta-kill. I'll say it every time because that's how I feel, it'd be funny. Damn, she keeps jumping right when we're about to land our charged attacks. Good thing we only need to hit the regular R ones then. Ride down the ladder, this clean rot knight will not leave us alone. Okay, perish. Running through the waterfall is fun. I really don't know why you can just run an NG+, plus, but I'll take it. Mulaney is the only boss left. Don't check the time code. I know how this goes. You think, oh, let's see how bad this is going to be by checking the time code. Maybe one day I'm going to add 20 minutes to the end of the video just to talk about Saw movies. Just to mess with you. Why are you power gaming YouTube? Anyway, yeah, this looks like Melania will be okay, right? Not terrible. Not great. I'll be honest, the first few runs were science runs. Science rules. I just wanted to see exactly how many wolf dives it would take to get that frostbite. Okay, one, two, oh, we got grabbed out of it, no two. Ow, there's two, and we die doing the third. It's almost as though I keep trying the same thing again and again without changing my strategy. This video is coming full circle. I'm just happy it's coming at all. Next attempt, one, two, hoo -hoo. Three. It's three. That's how many wolf assaults it takes to get to the frostbite center of a Melania pop. That's still just a bad strategy, so we're gonna stop that. Uh, next attempt, we see how much damage a dagger talisman boosted crit is. I like that. I like that a lot. Far enough away to avoid the ducky dance, this super armor is a real humdinger, huh? Stance break right before phase two, and we're doing a lot better since we stopped trying to make the Ash of War work. Again. Yeah, I thought the onion would be a good place to hit it. Then if we can just find a couple more windows in phase two, she'll take more damage from frostbite. It's the perfect plan. The dash she has is so bad for flasks. I will never complain about it though because she also has the ducky dance. That's worse. Next time, baby. Jump in, trade a lot. Trading with NG plus Melania is not smart. Get the stance break, but she's healed enough that she's just in ducky dance range and yeah, dead. Next time, baby. Get in there and slash with the running R2s. They're pretty good, so low on health, and it's hard to find a time to heal when she can just dash stab into you. If you're not healing though, that move is a pretty free punish, and every crit lets us get a charged attack off when she stands up. But yeah, no matter how far away you are, that means you're not safe to heal. Ducky Dance is another great heal punish, since the best way to avoid it is to just start running backwards when you're already 20 feet away. And if you're chugging, you're not running. We lead into phase two with a wolf jump. Melania doesn't reset her status on phase transition, like every other boss does. So we hit it again in the onion and that's two. Finding the window for the third though is just impossible. Bosses tend to move. She's below half health and refuses to onion until after a ducky dance. Damn, Ash of War in, but we're out of flasks so she can just clean us up. Next time, baby. Trade it up, avoid the grab, and yeah, already got a heal. She's just so fast. Uppercut is the fairest move she has, but then she's just loading up with super armor stuff and we straight up do not get an opportunity to stance break her if she's never vulnerable to it. Finally get one, breaks the chair too, pretty funny, then frostbite a bit while she's down. Phase two, here we go. How's my timing on the onion? Eh, C minus. At least she falls down. She super armors the charge attack as she stands up, then uses attack of the clones to just fully recover any pressure we were putting on her. Uppercut, I got greedy and tried to jump. Bad idea. Onion, uh, we made it out. Oh my god, that was close. Ducky dance, we live in. Charge and attacking. Lands as she super armor walk in. She has a super armor walk? 
sure. No flasks, no health, no magic, but we do have a jump attack and that breaks your stance to get us the win. At four hours and eight minutes, we killed 30 bosses and died 11 times. That puts Blythe right behind Nefeli, pretty cool to be an S tier. The Ash of War is bad, doesn't matter. The damage is split, doesn't matter. No Spirit Ash, doesn't matter. Royal Greatsword simply slams. Big Sword and Heavy Armor are good. It's such a fun way to play through the game. If you invest in intelligence, the smartest thing you can do is put your casting staff in the trash and just pick up a giant sword. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon to support the channel and check out exclusive videos and follow us on Twitch to hang out and stuff.